good morning or afternoon. Actually, I got up about five, so it's definitely afternoon. <laughs> um, I am so pleased to be here and grateful to the CPSC for inviting me to speak today. We've worked cooperatively in the past, and today marks an historic beginning of a powerful and effective initiative to prevent drowning. My involvement is deeply personal, and its roots are in terrible grief. In the summer of 2002, I attended a pool party with my five daughters, and that evening ended not with the expected bath and bedtime routine, but with a, a trip to the emergency room in Northern Virginia. When I did return home, it was to four of my girls, and I had to reveal to them that their sister had died. It was the turning point in all of our lives, that dividing line where everything is seen through the lens of a life preceding that traumatic night and all that's happened since. Playing in the spa attached to the pool, she was pinned down on the drain, her body held there until she drowned, the suction holding her with hundreds of pounds of pressure. She couldn't be seen from the pool deck, the bubbles and dark water obscured her body. It was her twin sister who discovered her when she got in the hot tub and she screamed for my help. I could not help her. I couldn't even pull her off the drain. Her name was Graham and her loss has marked my life in a profound way which this audience by and large will never understand. What I do hope for you to understand is how that child's preventable death has given rise to my passion for safety advocacy and how it's informed my perspective in the debate around drowning prevention. The campaign is providing great emphasis on public awareness and education, and it's a critical piece of efforts to reduce drownings. My work to date has been focused on legislation to require that pools and spas be designed, built, and maintained in ways to eliminate entrapment and drownings through various layers of protection. In other words, to have multiple solutions and safeguards in place to save the life of a child should one mechanism fail, should a child slip out the door unnoticed, or should a caregiver or water watcher become distracted. Ultimately, the Virginia Graham Baker Pool and Spa Safety Act was passed by Congress, shepherded by Congresswoman Schultz, and um, uh, the, the implementation of this law has fallen on the CPSC and this campaign is a large part of that process. I applaud the efforts and I'm counting on its success being widespread and lives saved. I am, however, deeply saddened that recently a vote that was taken in the CPSC compromises the intent of that law, which was to require the backup system be in place in the event that a drain cover became loose or damaged. I am here today with a friend and another mother whose name is Karen Cohn, whose son Zach also died by entrapment and whose life might have been saved had such a safety device been in place. The Cohn family has established the Zach Foundation in their son's memory, which I know will forcefully and effectively address pool safety and I look forward to working with them in an advisory role. Mrs. Cohn and I both wrote to the commission to convey our disappointment, but also to thank Chairman Tenenbaum for her support and dissension which was consistent with the intent of the law. Theoretically, I understand the debate around how drowning prevention is carried out. I've heard arguments that regulations are burdensome. I know a catastrophic burden, which is the death of your child. I've heard the arguments that these layers of protection are expensive. I know a greater expense, the, loss of living, the, the cost of living the rest of your life without your child. I've also many times endured the argument that relatively few drown by entrapment and that therefore the solutions are overkill. Too much effort exerted to prevent the death of just a few. One, one preventable death in this horrific and violent way is unacceptable. It is unconscionable not to address this in the most stringent and responsible way when indeed there are various options which when employed together, prevent entrapment and save a child from ever experiencing what Zach, Graham, Abigail Taylor, and so many others did when their lives ended. To summarize, 
After my daughter's death, which was then followed by several more entrapments, I made a decision to work and speak on behalf of those children. The pool industry has addressed drowning in half measures. They worked actively to roll back pool safety laws and it breaks the hearts of parents who have lost their child from drowning to see the industry tout their successes on the websites and literature that are circulated. Their position is influenced by financial concerns and constraints which are inconsistent with the concerns of those of us whose children have died in pools and spas. It's my hope that this campaign might bring an end to the lobbying efforts that leave pools less safe and join in making prevention, the prevention of drowning, a joint and mutual priority. It's my hope that through legislative means, one day pool four-sided fencing is required around backyard pools. It'll save lives. It will be expensive and some would say burdensome. There are those who will say that in their own backyard, no one has any right to interfere or insist on anything. But again, I'm gonna speak for those children who live in those backyards and who die in the backyards. Again, I know a burden and an expense, and I cannot understate this or overstate it. I know an expense for which there's no qualitative or quantitative measure, and that's the death of a child. Parents of children who have drowned advocate for safety and stringent safety because they know and they look back reflectively and recognize the things that would have prevented these drowning deaths from occurring. We not, may not be able to change the past, but often we become passionate that our history does not repeat itself and we take that passion and attempt to save lives. I am so proud to be here today and participate in this event and in the efforts of the CPSC and its partners to address drowning and save the lives of kids, the greatest gift that we're ever given. Thank you so much for having me.